page. Hey friends, welcome. Uh, we're gonna just take a couple minutes here. Um, my name is Tommy Nixon. I'm the CEO of Urban Youth Workers Institute, and I get to be the host today, um, and have been on these national Zoom calls. And so, uh, we're just gonna wait for a couple of you guys to jump on and join us, and then we're gonna get into a, a extremely valuable topic today. Um, and so, hang on, uh, stick with me here. I, we got a, an amazing guest with us. He's not really a guest; he's actually in house. Uh, Will Cumby's gonna be sharing on the power of staying in network, the power of being together and connected. And so um, we're going to get into that in a minute and um, it'll be good, but we'll give you guys a couple minutes to, to jump on and uh, start to engage in with us as we uh, prepare to get into this extremely important topic and uh, it'll be good. So uh, for those of you on Facebook, man, welcome. Uh, for those of our leaders out there who are tuning in later, maybe you're watching the video of this, man, we just know that we pray for you. Uh, we, we are you. We always say we're with you. Um, we're for you. We are you. Uh, we're still in the work. And, uh, and so thank you guys for everything that you do uh, out there in the streets uh, with these young people as you continue to live out the gospel in their lives. So um, give you, give you guys like another, another couple minutes and then, and then we'll get into it. So uh, stay tuned. Just hang on with us for a moment, um, and, and we'll we'll get into it real quick, and it'll be good, man. So, give you guys another about, about like sixty seconds or so, um, and we'll jump in. So, welcome as you guys jump in on Facebook. I'm gonna see uh, what we're looking at here. Let's see. All right. Okay, we got some of you on there, man. We see you guys, and so. Appreciate you guys jumping in. Um, yep. And so uh, talking about talking about who is uh, who's in your community, man. So keeping your boat afloat, the staying power of network. So uh, I'll give you guys a couple more seconds, about uh, 30 seconds, and then I'm going to go ahead and jump in, introduce the topic, um, and, uh, and we'll get into it, friends. So all right. All right, uh, Alex, we good? Yeah, you're good, bro. All right, man, let's go. Friends, welcome uh, to a, a one of our monthly calls, our national Zoom call, as, as we want to continue to resource you. Um, now, we started these last year. It's been a year of doing these, but last year when the pandemic kicked off, we did one of these every week, and you guys showed up, and we wanted to make sure that we were there for you, that we were resourcing you, that that you knew you weren't alone, and we were going to walk with you through this whole pandemic. We've continued to do so, and so thank you to, to those of you who are jumping on with us on Facebook now, to those of you who are going to watch this later. But we're talking about uh, a really important topic today, and I want to want to be a little um, just honest with you uh, on my day today, uh, and. Um, I got to be honest, I, I've been dealing with this issue today. And so uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, I, you know, how, to, how do you fuel your boat, how to keep your boat afloat, the staying power of networks, how to keep connected. And really, uh, I had a leader call me uh, a week ago and just said, man, can we meet up? Um, it's lonely. Leadership is really lonely. And I've been struggling with this year of pandemic being not being in contact with people, not gathering a, a ton, not, you know, um, kind of being in my office just with my family. And it's really taking a toll on me. And I think I'm a mid age, you know, middle age, like I'm 42. Um, we're in a weird season. My kids are, are my oldest is now 14. My youngest is three. So we're all over the place. We have five children. And I was really feeling pretty lonely, man, to be honest. I'm feeling, um, you know, trying to assess friendships and who are my friends and who do I want to hang out with? Who can I hang out with? And and so this has actually been a huge topic uh, for me. And, and I've been talking about my wife with my wife with it about like, you know, couples friends and what's our community and what does this look like? And, and over the last couple of years, we've transitioned out of some really um, core communities for us, some, some networks of people that that we've lived life with and cried with and laughed with. And, and we've made some transitions out of those spaces for all good reasons. Um, 
and and now I have more of a national community. And what does that look like? And how am I staying connected? And so um, that's what we want to talk about today. Because friends, we were made to be in community. And I could prove this through scripture. I mean, God himself, the Trinity, um, is God is love. And within himself, um, the, the three persons of the Godhead, it, in himself is community. So you can't really have love without community. And so God embodies that. And not only does he do that, then he creates us and he created us for community so that we could be with him. And then he creates, um, you know, Adam and then Eve, and then that's a community. And then they create children and then that's a community. And so there's this continued creation of community that goes all throughout scripture. And we are supposed to be in community. Now, what happens is you, you and I got a call to, to some um, neighborhood to some to young people for all of us uh, to some part of the kingdom of God to some city to some community some neighborhood some church whatever it was and it's odd that we can be surrounded by people and then find ourselves alone the work that you guys do is extremely difficult I got off the phone with uh, a, a leader yesterday literally um, right by their house there was a gunfight and there were at least 50 shell casings in this part from this gunfight this isn't like a quick drive-by. These are the like gun battles happening in the neighborhood. And this is the kind of stuff that we have to deal with. And um, you can't deal with that alone. And we've had a year of trying to get through this alone. So we want to talk about it, man. We want to bring it up. I want to encourage you. Uh, and, and you can encourage me. We have to fight for community and get that network, engage in it. Um, and some of us are called to actually and I'm one of those people to build the network so that people, leaders like you and I can come together and feel like we're not crazy. We're not alone. Other people get it and they're there to support us and cheer us on. Um, and so sometimes we just need that. We just need somebody in our corner to go, hey, you're not crazy. You're doing a good job. And that's what we want to bring to you guys today. So uh, I want to introduce to you um, our guest for today, um, who's actually on staff now with um, Urban Youth Workers Institute. He also does a million other things. He's an amazing youth pastor in Houston, Texas. So I want to invite um, and, and welcome Will Cumbie on the call today. He's going to be our guest as we kind of press into this, this understanding of networks and, and community um, as leaders. And so, hey, Will, welcome, brother. I'm so glad you're here. Tommy, bro, it's good, man. I'm glad to be on this Zoom call, Facebook live from the greatest state in the nation, Houston, Texas. <laughs> I'm, a okay. little, I'm a little All proud. Right. <laughs> what, what do you expect? I'm a Texan, you know? <laughs> bro, we already got beef, bro. Just Astros and Dodgers already, man. But you know what? But God, you know I'm what I'm not saying? not going to talk any trash cans tonight, so, you know. <laughs> it hurts, bro. No, nah, man, I'm so glad you're here, brother. So glad you're here. And so, and, and really quickly, just so you guys know, Will, tell us a little bit about just your context, you know what I mean? Um, not only with UIWI, but man, tell us your context, youth pastoring, speaking, like give it to us, man. <laughs> okay, um, okay, well, let me first start with my first job is I'm a husband. Um, I've been married for 10 years, 11 this year. I have three amazing children, a nine-year-old, a five-year-old and a four-year-old. Uh, two boys, my four-year-old's my, my little baby girl, but she's like the princess slash queen of the house. Um, outside of that, um, I'm a youth pastor at the Fountain of Praise here in Houston, Texas. Um, in addition to that, I'm a curriculum writer. I've written for Grow, uh, Youth Specialties, and right now I'm doing some writing for uh, Lifeway. Um, in addition to that, I do some coaching with Youth Ministry Booster. Um, in addition to that, I'm a personal trainer. Uh, so I do help people get their fitness back in place. Uh, in addition to that, uh, what else do I do? You're, you're um, a football coach, bro. I am. I am a football coach. I do. I do coach my son's football team. Um, I'm a chaplain with uh, Fort Bend ISD. Um, I was blessed to be able to walk with Thurgood Marshall High School to state a couple of times and to hang out with those guys before every football game. Um, but more than anything of all the things that I do, number one, being a husband, uh, mother thing is just truly, I'm a child of God. And any way that I can be a living, breathing example of Jesus Christ, man, I'm in it. The moon was created to reflect the sun. And if I can be a mirror of the sun, man, I'm about that life. 
Yeah, man. I love it. Okay. So, and I knew you were doing all that stuff. And then I approach you. <laughs> I'm like, Hey, <laughs> you free time? I, think, I think there's something, I saw a little piece of plate that, you know, let, can I, can I put something there? Right. So tell, tell the people what you do for us, man. So, which is the reason we're talking today. Um, my most recent, uh, acquisition of position, um, fun thing that I do is I'm the National Network Coordinator for uh, Urban Youth Workers Initiative. Um, it's probably the coolest thing, one of the coolest things I'm doing right now. I get to do soul care, I get to do support, resource development for 10 cities all across uh, the nation from California all the way to New York and New Jersey. So, I mean, that's that's the whole, that's the whole, I don't know, the, uh, what, the gambit, the whole, the whole thing, the spectrum, I get it all. And I love it. Man, um, that's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, one of the reasons why we had, I mean, well, okay. Two things. One, personally, when you hear about all that Will's doing, when I met Will, we met at something called manhood camp and Larry Acosta had flown Will out and, and, and we were just chopping it up on the field. And it was like, um, and, and we were talking and I, I even remember from that conversation and other conversations, Will, just being like, man, it was so it was so refreshing for you to find this this community of other leaders that were doing what you were doing, like that got it that right. And and that's something that I hear from a lot of you guys out there. And I and I, I don't want to bring it up because I know you're, you're salty about it. But, you know, that's one of the reasons why conference was so beautiful is because you had this gathering of leaders and you just didn't feel like you were alone anymore. And it gave you what you needed to continue. Well, last year when the pandemic hit, um, you know, we started these Zoom calls. We, we were doing all the stuff. We dropped some resources. One of the things though that, that I felt a deep, deep like burden for is the, the idea that you guys desperately needed to be supported where you were at. And so we, um, I wanted to, to see and support existing networks that were already on the ground or start some. So we actually started 10 uh, or supported uh, 10 networks across the country um, and then try to just figure out how do we support that? How do we make sure people are, um, you know, it was digitally, but gathering and being supported and being prayed for and getting resourced. And so um, we tried to roll that out last year. And so Will's actually stepped in on that. We had a guy that started that with us, Sean Fenner, who's an amazing pastor and, and leader um, and part of deep part of our community. And then um, as things continue to get crazy at his church and he took on even more um, uh, responsibility, we were able to get Will um, to come in and take that on. And he's done a great job. And so, so that's really why we're here. It was that burden to go, I know all of you guys out there were sitting around going, what am I supposed to do? Or how am I supposed to do this? Or how am I supposed to carry this? And I got to tell you guys, I, I was right there with you. I know I'm leading this thing, but um, if I didn't have some of that community around me, if I didn't have um, other leaders that I could grab onto my staff that we could just get together and pray and just go, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I, I don't know how, if we would have made it through last year. And so, man, that's what Will's doing here. And so we're so excited about it, man. And so um, for those of you running networks or um, you're part of networks, we're so glad that you're part of them, but we do want to encourage you, friends, you have got to get to connected to other leaders. And that's what we want to talk about today, man. So, okay. So Will, um, you've been, you've been living this out. Not only you're a networker. I mean, you've been networking people all over the place. Um, you know, you're doing that, uh, as you know, as you've seen this and experienced in your own life, like from scripture, man, biblically, let's say, you know, you are a busy youth worker, why, why should people invest in a network or try to get connected? We're, we're busy already, right? But what would you say to someone, to a leader who's listening right now? Why is it so important for them to be connected? That's, a, that's an awesome question. I remember, I think it was like 20 years ago when I first got into youth ministry. Um, I was working for a large ministry. And did you know it's possible to feel alone in a room full of people? Um, and so even though I would be in a room full of students, I would feel like, man, I've shouldered all of this responsibility by myself. And then even at conference, I remember the first time I went, I was like, man, I, I still feel in this giant room of leaders alone. And then in Houston, what happened was a guy reached out to me and was like, his name was Devell Simmons, 
who connected me to a lady named Sean, I mean, uh, Sheree Johnson, who I met another guy named Sean Nelson. And what happened was I realized that, man, I'm not by myself. And then I went to conference and I met Sean Fenner and I met Alexander James and I, and I was like, okay, I'm not by myself. So when you ask the question, um, how do we invest or why should we invest in a network? It's because um, we shouldn't do life by ourselves. We shouldn't do life by ourselves. That, that's not the way God intended us to live. You look, even look in Genesis and, and he says, it's not good that man should be alone. And although we typically use that scripture to uh, justify marriage, right? But I honestly believe that God believes in partnership. Hashtag fuelnetworkpartners.org. <laughs> um, he, he believes in that partnership. And, and there's multiple times in scripture where he, he, he personifies it. He punctuates it with Mark 6, where he says he sent them out two by two. Uh, we can look at Ecclesiastes, where he says two are better than one. And Exodus 17, you remember where Moses was, was at that battle and had Aaron and her, and he was like, okay, I can do this. There's so many times where he's like, look, guys, I want you to see this over and over again. You need a network. You need partnership. You need someone to stand next to you. Because if you have partnership or you have network, the first thing you realize is that you have trust. Right? When, when I see a group of people who are partnered together, I say, you know what? This is something I can I can trust. I, I know that getting into this, I can be vulnerable with this group because we're all dealing with the same thing. Let me let me give uh, scripture to that. Let's look at Luke five. Right here, we have Simon. He's washing his nets. Right, he's pretty much being like, "Yo, I'm done. Like I'm I'm through." Like many people who have survived this pandemic and survived is such a big word when we talk about this pandemic but they're like, I'm done, I can't. And, and what happens is we start to tell ourselves that we can't do it. Do you know that if we are the only voice we're hearing, we'll always be right? <laughs> <laughs> and so what happens is, here, but when you look at that story, you know what's crazy is uh, at Luke five and two, it says there were two boats by the shore. So hold on. Simon was not the only one with not only an empty boat, but an empty heart because he had fished all day and had nothing. Like many people during the pandemic, I've been throwing out Zoom calls all, all pandemic and I'm getting, I was used to a thousand kids or a hundred kids or even 50 kids or 20 kids. And now I might get one. I feel like my boat is empty. Mm. But then we look at the story and there's two boats there. Listen, friend, if you're watching this right now, hashtag fuelnetworkpartners.org, you're not the only boat that's in this water. Yeah, man. That's so and, and that's where it's at. So that's that trust and then there's that power, right? You have partner and power in networks and you, and you have partnership, right? But okay, I, I, I don't want to monopolize the conversation. Oh, no, no, man. And that's why I we truly love, believe uh, in, this, in, in, in networks and partner. Um, my good friend, Alexander James, my, I think this was like my third, con I can't remember. I've gone to so many conferences. Shout out to the national conference. It's coming back. Um, he did a poem where he talks about uh, a network and making your network. And that's the thing, man. We, we have to have this network to make our network. Um, but yeah, I'll throw it back to you, man. Cause I, 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 I mean, I, I love this it. is my soapbox. I love this. Well, I mean, part of it too, friends, it's like, it just, sometimes when you just get together with a brother or sister, somebody that, that gets it, you know what I mean? Um, someone that's there to encourage you, uh, you know, the, your position doesn't change, right? You might be in the same position, but your perspective changes. And mm -hmm. it just gives you a little bit, it is, it is crazy how healing it is when someone's like, no, you're not crazy. That no, that's what it is. You know what I mean? Um, or goes, hey, I see you. You're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. um, it, mm -hmm. It's it's crazy. And so for those of you guys who are watching right now on Facebook, what I want you to can you tag somebody right now that needs to listen to this? Maybe it's somebody part of your community. Um, maybe it's somebody that you that you love that you need to be in community with. Um, but it's just been crazy. You haven't been in touch. You've just been. You know, the guy I talked to a couple of days ago that talked about all those bullet casings at the park, like we hadn't talked in a, in a minute. Um, and, you know, it, it was just really healing for him just to be like, bro, I love you, man, dude. Like, 
Like it's been the same for him. It's been tough. Um, and so if that's you, man, go ahead, share, share this video, uh, tag somebody, bring them on in because they need to hear this. And so as we talk about this importance of being in community and, and being a part of a network of leaders, um, you know, tell me like, so you're the national network coordinator. What, what, um, what are you hearing from leaders out there? I mean, what are, what are people struggling with? Like, what's, what's the word on the street, bro? You know what I mean? Like, what are you hearing from folks? Well, I'm hearing a lot right now. I was on Facebook shouting out Caleb, one of our network leaders. Yeah. That's my guy out there in Phoenix and shouting out Markeisha, who's in Houston, killing it, uh, doing things out here. But what honestly I'm hearing uh, is number one, they're burnt out. Hmm. Um, when you went into the pandemic, uh, you had a team. But of course, in some ministries, they lost budget. And so you went from saying, hey, Bill, can you run lights? And hey, you know, Stephanie, can you run this? And now you are the one-stop shop. You are the camera operator. You're the, the laptop coordinator. You're the Zoom operator. And they're just like, yo, I am. And then you're still doing uh, the, the phone calls to your kiddos and your leadership and you're just like dude this is too much right so first thing i'm hearing is like a lot of them are like yo i'm i'm burnt out and now the pandemic is like i'm not gonna say over but it, it's 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 dwindling or diminishing and we're like okay now i gotta ramp it up and they're like what do you mean ramp it up <laughs> i've been operating on 10 and now what's the next you know i'm redlining at this point mm. uh, so burnout anxiety yeah. Um, what is it like to go and now you're going to have a room full of kids? Are they vaccinated? Are they not vaccinated? Do we wear our masks? How do I do uh, this ministry? How do I now need to do? Like, there's anxiety about that. Uh, and here's the second part. We've seen now that, uh, you know, during the pandemic, options became more available. Yeah. Here's the point. When we, when, when, it, when you were it, there was no, okay, well, let me check out what this youth ministry is doing. Let me see what someone else is doing. And so there's this idea that what if what I do isn't good enough when I reopen? Mm. Everybody else has budget. Everybody else has this. They have lights. They have this. And this is all I have. What if my kids say, I'm not good enough when we come back? Yeah, that's real. Um, anticipation, because there are some that are over it. And they're like, I just, I just need to get back in front of my kids again, right? And then the last thing that I'm hearing is just, uh, there are those that are, um, I don't it's like those Bugs Bunny car cartoons where they would go through like all the emotions in six seconds. Yeah, yeah. And they're just like, I think I'm happy. No, I'm sad. Wait, no, I'm angry. Wait, okay, I don't know. And they're just ah! <laughs> like this. Um, so I'm hearing a lot of that. And I go back to what I said earlier. It's a lot of it comes from, I feel like I'm by myself. Yeah. Yeah, man, I mean, and, part of it, you know, when you talk about like redlining, I, I love that idea. Like, man, I've been at 10. How am I supposed to ramp up right now? Or yeah, you know, I'm just I've been just trying to get through this and things haven't been working and you've been disappointed and, and it's, it's been tough. Right. And, and we're not even talking about all the other things that are going on. Right. I mean, just all, you know, all the things, right. Mm -hmm. That weigh on us. Um, you know, and what does that look like, you know, when it comes to, how do you be a healthy leader in this, right? Yeah. You know, when you when you get to self care, like what does that look like? The the kind of the benefits of like self care and, and being in that network of folks. Like, what have you experienced with that? And I, you know, I, you and I have experienced some of that. Yeah. Um, oh, what? <laughs> because I'm, I I have all the free time in the world. Like you know, <laughs> I used to live by this quote of um, I don't go to bed, I fall asleep, and I was so <laughs> proud of that quote till. I found out that I couldn't get out of bed because I was just so exhausted. Yeah. Um, and, and I remember I was watching um, Eric Thomas, like was digging it, right? And he was talking about, I get up at 3 a.m. and I do this. And I was like, I need to get up at 3 a.m. And, and I was always doing it. Then one day I took the time, you know how many people listen, um, but they don't really hear. Mm. And, I'm, and he said something that, that caught me. He was like, yeah, I get up at 3 a.m. He's like, but you know how I can do that? He's like, I take naps. <laughs> I was like, and you're what? like, man. <laughs> I was like, boom. <laughs> when we talk about self care, uh, that made so much sense to me. 
we, we operate at this capacity and there's some that can do so many great things at such high levels and such velocity, there still has to be this point where you say, let me unplug, let me shut down. So how do we, how do we do that? How do we do that? Um, I know this, this preacher, um, he's a prolific prophet by the name of Tommy who talked about these three things. He was like, he was like stone, <laughs> he was like cotton. And then I think it was like water. And, and I and, and he when he put it out there, I think it was just like, hey, I'm gonna put this out there. But like it resonated with me that you have, there's some things that you need, basic elements for for living, right? We talk about the Bible, the basic instructions before leaving Earth, but there's some basic things before just living. Oh yeah, self like working out, getting outside. Like too many times we've been stuck in the house all day by yourself. Like when's the last time you went outside and just walked the block? Um, I just genuinely read your Bible, not because you got to preach or teach or create something, but just like, God, I just need you to speak to me. When I think about going back to the story of uh, Simon, when he was washing his nets, in the story, it says that Jesus was walking by and watch this. It says, he saw at the water's edge two boats. If you go to the story of the, um, the woman who lost the coin or even the, the sheep, right? The lost sheep. Yeah. The whole thing is, he sees us. And that is crucial to self-care is that we sometimes think nobody sees how hard we're working. Yeah. And friend, if you're watching today, let me tell you, God sees you, but he's also reminding you to spend time with him. And the way we do that is you got to get that, that shutdown time that um, there's a quote I love that says your pace determines your peace. Mm. And there's so much that we have to get done but dude, slow down. Like it, it'll get done. But if it doesn't, the sun's still gonna come up tomorrow. Yeah. I'm gonna do what I can, and and be you know use my calendar, calendar myself, and do those things. Um, whatever you can do. I, I, there's another thing I live by is if it can be done in two minutes, do it now. If, if yeah, it can yeah. be done in two minutes or less, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that has helped me tremendously. But the, really that's what I would say is the self-care thing is we, our body's gonna give us a hundred signs to tell us, hey, shutdown is happening real soon. Um, and yeah. we, we, have to, we have to pull out, man. You gotta, you, you gotta do that. And, and sometimes here, I go back to, if we don't, if we're the only voice we're hearing, we'll think we're always right. We need someone to kind of pull us to the side and be like, yo bro, you're, you're burning the candle at both ends. Like, like I need you. And everybody that's giving you criticism is not, like critiquing you. They're not trying to stop you. Like there's a lot of people who are, and that's what networks do is you got people who you can be transparent and honest with and they can say, hey, you are doing a great job. And I'm not telling you to stop what you're doing. I'm just saying, hey man, when's the last time you went out with your wife on a date? Yeah. Not to a ministry function, right? But just you and her. When's the last time like you just like hung out, like just sat there with your kids and like, mm. uh, when's the last time you just, I don't know, talk to God about not ministry, but just, hey, dude, how you doing? <laughs> you know, and that's, that's, that, that's where I'm at with it. So self-care. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, part of it for me, I think if it's a weird thing where sometimes, and this is always a weird thing. You just need somebody to give you permission. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. like, you know, it's okay to say, to say no, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. it's okay. You don't have to prove mm -hmm. that you love Jesus by being out five nights a week. Right. He's like, you I see. That we I we actually don't believe that you work your way to heaven. We know that, right? You know, but we need <laughs> we to be reminded sometimes. I mean, honestly, like a lot of us come from trauma. A lot of us come from a lot of brokenness, father issues. So I'm, I'm working my butt off because I want God to be proud of me. And then God, the father, like whispers in my ear through the Holy Spirit and through scripture and goes, Hey, Tommy, I'm already proud of you. I can't be more proud of you than I am right now. And and I have a hard time with that. I'm like, nah, that's impossible. Wait till you see what I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think God's like, oh man. Okay. Uh, you know, a lot of like grace for me, but you know, for some of you guys, you just need, you need to be in a network of people that get what you're coming, what you're doing and can speak to you and just give you permission to go, Hey, 
don't, don't have to do it. Now, we joked earlier about all the things that Will does, but I want to be real transparent with all you guys on the call. I have grilled this man about how much he does. Are you, are you spending time with your wife? Are you, you got that time with your kids? How is that looking? In mm -hmm. fact, for him to take on this job, which by the way, I'll just put your business out there, bro, but it's 10 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So, but for that 10 hours myself, and I'm going to share about a partnership right now in a minute, um, with the fuel network to, to make another point, but, um, you know, me and, and Gerald, who's part of uh, Davuli, which we'll talk about, we, we went back and forth. I, we were like, we love Will, super talented. <laughs> we love this man. I don't know if he has capacity. And it took a while, remember Will? And we, ha we had direct talks about it. Hey, he listen. Was, he was very man. honest about it. I think you could do this. And I think you kill the game in this. I'm worried about your capacity. And that's a good, that's a good picture, friend. So we joke about it and see, even the way we joke about it, there's a little hint of like, right. I'm dope because <laughs> look at how much I can do. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but the reality for us friends is that we need people. I need guys like Will. Will needs guys like me. We need men like Gerald and others, brothers and sisters to come in and go, Hey, I'm a little worried about you. Hey, Tommy, you know, it's okay to, to not go to that. Right. Yeah. It's okay to say no. It's okay, Tommy, to go and and take some, you know, take a half day, go to the beach, do, you know, whatever it is that I need to do to rejuvenate, to take a rest, go to bed earlier, brother. And, you know, I might look at, uh, at Will and be like, dang, I need to work out too. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes this t-shirt's a little tight and I can see, I can see the ripples. You know what I mean? I, you, so, <laughs> but I, I, and I'm like, okay, so, that's why it's so important, friends, that, that you are in a network of people, that there are people close enough to you and your work um, and to who you are and your family to, to just say, hey, and to, to gracefully and lovingly just give you permission to take care of yourself. Yeah. To go, Dude, you did a great job during pandemic. It was crazy for all of us. It's okay mm -hmm. to, to encourage you. Hey, things are opening up. Let's get back to it. Another thing that I've heard from network leaders and others is that you know, a lot of people are like, there's not a lot going on that, that it almost like the last year took it out of you. And, and you're kind of like, man, do I have what it takes to, to get on this horse again? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? To start it up again, to, to do it in a different way. We know it's hard, but you need that, that community of people to help you do that, man. So, um, I was, I was gonna say, I was going to tag that a little bit. Cause yeah, you yeah, think, it. I, I think it's possible that we can drown in our own success. Mm -hmm. Um, oh. And, and, and like, I look at two stories, you know, one, uh, when Peter stepped off the boat, right? Cause he was, you know, everybody wants to be that Peter guy. That's like, I'm not going to sit on this boat and cry and suffer and drown. Choose me, Lord. I'm going to jump out there. I'm going to, I'm going to get out there. And Lord, I, I asked to step on this. And, and many of us asked to be in youth ministry. We asked for success. God, I want to be seen. I want to be recognized. I want to be busy. I want to do the will. And you get out there. And, and, and we find ourselves drowning in the very thing we asked for. Oh yeah. Right. We, we oh. asked to walk on water. We asked to do the miraculous. And now the miraculous is making us sick. Then I look at the story of um, the, uh, Peter. Here we go again, Peter. Peter, Peter is always drowning. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you look at the, you look when he was on the boat, right. And, and, and remember he was fishing and they pulled the nets up and all the fish start coming into their boat. But then it's like, he called in his partners, his network, right? And he was, been, he was able to share the fish that he had caught. But what would happen if Peter did not have that network and accepted all of that fish onto his boat? It would have sank. Yeah. And so it's necessary that if Peter didn't have Jesus when he was walking on that water, he would have drowned. If Peter didn't have partnership when he was fishing, he would have drowned. Over and over again, it's that reminder that, dude, you can be successful and still have partners. Yeah, I love it. In fact, so a couple of things to take away if you're just joining the conversation and you're watching, like a couple of things to take away. We were made for community. It, yeah. It's, a, it's imperative that you are part of a community of people. Um, and, and, you know, the benefits of that is self care, someone to give you permission someone to cheer you on, encourage you, someone to, to spur you forward in the work that God's giving you to do, just like Will's talking about right now. 
And, and a, another area that I want to highlight, um, and, and we're living this out, so uh, we're all about this, is the impact that you can have happens through networks and partnerships and collaborations. And you can't do this work alone. It, that time has passed. Um, we have too big of a job. Um, in fact, Al Alexander James, who's on our staff now, was making fun of me because on our on the podcast that we have, uh, the features here, um, I, I I was quoted saying, "Look, I don't care about UIW Black." Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I meant by that, that and Larry Costa, this is what I meant by this, brother, is that I the kingdom of God's bigger than the vehicle of UIW. Now I love UIW. I'm this is my job. This is my calling to lead this organization, but the, the, what God's up to is so much bigger. And if it's so much bigger and UIWI can't do it alone, then we actually need to be a network in collaboration and community in community with other organizations. And actually, you know, we have created these fuel networks or we're supporting existing networks. Um, and we're not doing, we're not even doing this work alone. In fact, we're working with DeVos Urban Leadership Initiative, uh, what's known as Davuli. So DeVos Urban Leadership Initiative of Davuli, and we partnered and we just came to them and said, listen, we have this, we have, we know that this is a need. They're already networked. They've been doing amazing work for 20 years. Um, and, and, and we just said, can we do this fuel networks together? So this isn't just a UIWI thing. This is a collaboration with Davuli where we come together and we share resources and we share um, talents and giftings and we share um, the gift and the burden of, of making sure that you guys out there have a community of leaders that, you, that can, you can connect with, that you can reach out to, that you can commiserate with, that you can celebrate with, um, and so that you can be the leader that you were created to be. Like, we can't do this alone. So even in the thing that, that Will's running, that, we, that we've created, we've created it in community, in a network with Davuli and one of our partners. And so like, Will, tell, tell us a little bit about even in that partnership, how is that network and that community and being part of Davuli and you're a Davuli grad, right? How has that impacted you? Like share a little bit about that. So um, I talked about how like 20 years ago when I got into ministry, it was, you know, I'm doing it by myself. And then um, when I transitioned to the church called the Fountain of Praise, where I serve now, um, I received an email about being in Davuli. And I was like, I don't know what this is, but I'll look it up. Um, shout out to those who say I'll jump into things that I'm not quite certain of. And so I filled it out, went through the program. It was phenomenal. Met a guy named Gerald Bell, probably one of the, I was going to say dopest, but can we say dope? I don't know. Oh yeah. We, we can say dope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably one of the coolest guys I've met. He's also a graduate of Oral Roberts University, which is where I went to school as well. But um, I, we, I went through the Bully and there's, they have these core principles, these core values. And I learned about interdependence and I learned about uh, balance. But one of the things that really stood out was that it was more than what they could just, the information they could provide to us, but the platform they wanted to put us on. That anyone that went through it, they were like, now, if you take these resources, it can take you places and we'll help you. And that's the thing that I loved about Davuli is that getting into it, it was this partnership, it was this family, it was this community that although I went through the program in 2010, I'm still friends with all of those individuals and we still hang out with each other. We see, we celebrate each other's kids. We come to each other's events, but also we're like, hey, look, I need a speaker for this. I need this. And we're partnering with each other. And Davuli has shown us that there's something about, here's, here's the part that caught me the most is when we were at one of the sessions and they said, um, we want to pretty much save the urban youth leader. And not saying that, you know, it's they're the great savior, but what they were saying is, here's the deal. We have enough issues with fatherlessness, right? Yeah. But when we talk about youth pastors who do a year and burn out or do two years and, and quit or say, hey, this isn't for me. What happens is we create generations of kids that when they, they look to that youth pastor as a parental role, whether you be a male or female, but when that role keeps moving over and over again and keeps changing over and over again, it's like, who do I believe in? Who do I, who can I come to? And that stood out to me. And so then when we created the partnership with Davuli and UIWI, I was like, this is my jam. 
because the whole premise is we want to help youth pastors survive and not just survive, but to thrive and to be successful and to see that you can't do ministry alone. And that's when they quit is when you're trying to fish and you've only got one boat, right? Or you're trying to walk on water and you forget that you still need your savior. And, 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 and so that's that partnership. And so what happens was that when that marriage happened, we were now able to do astronomical things with resourcing and support and trainings and, and programs and opportunities for leaders to do things that previously they would not have had access to because it was like, I just didn't even know it existed. It always existed. But like you said earlier with recognizing when you need rest, we need someone to show us where these things are. We need someone like my, 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 my daughter, she's four. Um, I don't know if you've ever done this at an Easter egg hunt. You kind of show, like you take your youngest and you begin to show them where the eggs are, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> because oh, yeah. why, why do you do that? Why would you show her where the, or him or her where the eggs are? Because there's other older kids. There's other older kids, right? And they and they have some advantages. Up, yeah, you're like, right? hey. <laughs> and, and here's the deal. You want your little one to win. Yes. I yes. want you to win. Yes. So this marriage of Davuli and 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 UIWI to make the uh the the network is so that we can make the network. <laughs> and I want you to win. Oh, absolutely, man. And I just so you guys know, too, like uh, the sure, way I look at, that, man. at collaborations is that, look, these guys have been doing it and doing an amazing job for over 20 years. Why would I want to restart something that somebody else already does really well? And yeah. we've got to get away from this, like, kind of weird competitive jealousy thing that we do in the kingdom of God, like where we're competing. I'm not competing against you. We, nah, we're man. on the same team. So when I was like, man, like, and, and I learned more about, I, I didn't get to go through Davuli. Um, and shoot, we have a certification program too. But here's the thing. I want you guys to go through Davuli. It's amazing. And I'm not in competition. And there are enough of us. And there are definitely enough young people that need to hear the gospel and be discipled. What do I care? I don't, yeah. I don't care <laughs> if you go with Davuli. In fact, I want you to, right? Yeah. Um, or you, you UIWI or what? I mean, what does it matter? And that's why this, this kind of collaboration works. Now, friends, I want you to get a vision for what does that mean in your city? Mm -hmm. What does that mean in, in, in where you're at? What could that look like if you got together with a bunch of other people that were doing youth work in your city and you just said, hey, what would it look like if we didn't do this alone? What, yeah. what would it look like if we just encouraged each other? What would it look like if we uh, combined youth groups? Uh-oh. You know, what would it look like to, to, to do projects together, to go on mission together, to, to fundraise together, to, to, to collaborate on, to, on the issue that we really care about in our city? Like, this is actually where you want to see you go. Yeah. So it's another benefit. So yes, self-care, right? Um, you were called to this. You were called to, to do that. The other beautiful part that is the impact. You can have deeper impact in, what, in the kingdom of God if you do it together. Um, and so I want to, I just want to make sure you understand what we're talking about and what Will's eloquently talking about where, you know, the network makes the net work, right? Like, and I think we jacked that from Alexander James, but totally did. Um, yeah, <laughs> so if we say it one more time, it's ours though. It's ours. Know that. <laughs> we gave him credit the first time. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So you only get three times, right? So uh, before all of a sudden it's like, I've always said, um, <laughs> But so this is why this is so important, friends. And we want to, we want to push you towards networks. And um, we have an, another partner, a National Network of Youth Ministries. Like they're, they're out there doing it as well. Like I don't, we just want you to be connected. But yeah. what we're doing here with Davuli is we've had these 10 fuel networks, right? Um, and so like, and, and we want you to be a part of it. And if it's not in one of your cities, Man, we want to talk to you in the future. Maybe you're already part of a network. How can we support you? How can we pray for you? How can you uh, restart it? Because it maybe it's fallen off the last year. And so, um, Will, give them a little bit about what what are we offering then? To if we're saying, hey, this is a problem, you guys need to be connected, um, and and we're giving all these up, you know, these examples of why it's so important from from self care to to larger impact. You know, what where do 
you know, where do people start? Like help them out. Like, what does this look like for them? Okay. So where do we start? Right. We realize that, um, there, there is power in community, right? Um, so being a part of this, right, your audience to men and women who are champions in this, who've done this, who've accomplished some things that you want to achieve. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, experience is the greatest teacher. That doesn't mean that you need to experience it, right? That you can kind of learn and, and learn and, and collaborate with some people who've already done it. I saw my guy, John, uh, he's on the Facebook feed as well, man. He's with the National Network of Youth Ministries. Man. And it's all about like, hey, how can I see what you're doing? How can I celebrate what you're doing? So how do I get into this whole network thing? Let me let me drop this again. And I'm totally being intentional with this fuelnetworkpartners.org. I want to encourage you to go there, check it out, click on the link, read about what we're doing, right? The, the, the first thing with anything you do is like, let me see what this is about. Read it. Like you've heard the testimonies from me. Um, I'm, a li- I'm not speaking about something that I have not lived, right? I, not only have I gotten this position as a national network coordinator, but man, I, I helped lead a network in Houston. And, and so I saw the benefit of it. Benefit of it. So first part that you do is read that, find out some more information about it. And then if you want to know even more, you can shoot us an email, uh, will, W-I-L-L at um, UIWI.org. Uh, reach out, um, go through the UIWI website. Like go through it, see what it's about. You have questions, hit us up because there's a lot of different elements to it that will uh, be great. So what are the benefits of it? You get community, um, you get support, you get access to resources. How many times have you um, had a Sunday and you were like, I just don't, I just don't have it, right? Just as much as you can have um, writer's block, you can have preacher's block where you're just like, I ain't got it. But network, man, I can't tell you how many times uh, I've been able to just have conversations with people. And I was like, you know what? That's my word for Sunday. I needed it. Um, the soul care, um, access to resources. There, there's a lot of things. Maybe your team wants to go on a mission trip and you're like, I just cannot afford to go on a mission trip. I want to take my kids on a mission trip. Man, is, is there a way? How do I do that? We possibly could have a way to help you get your kids on a mission trip. There's a lot of things that, that are being a part of something. Here's the deal. I learned this in, um, when I was in school is that when you connect to something bigger than you, it strengthens you. It doesn't weaken you, it strengthens you. And here's, here's another thing that's super awesome is when you take a candle that's lit and you uh, uh, light another candle, it does not diminish the power or the strength of the first candle. And that's what we're doing is we're continuously lighting candles and do what God has called us to be, the light of the world, man. Uh, that's so good, man. So for, for those of you guys out there and, and you're just like, man, I, I do, I feel alone. I, I wanna be connected. Uh, you know, hit up Will, uh, Will at UIWI.org. Go check out what, what FuelNetworkPartners.org, FuelNetworkPartners.org, um, and, and see what that collaboration looks like. Go check out uh, Davuli.org, D-V-U-L-I.org. Um, see where they're going to, what cities are they going to be in? Maybe you can get in one of those cohorts. Uh, you know, check out National Network of Youth Ministries uh, if we're not in one of your cities. But reach out, reach out to Will. We want to how can we support you? We want to know what you're doing. We want to, to follow you. We want to, we want to make sure that, that all youth were urban youth workers across this country. One, know that there's a network like this, right? Right. Um, and we want to know, man, oh, what God's up to, how can we support you? Um, how can we help you create that network? And maybe it's already existing. Maybe we just want to support what's already happening. Again, we're kingdom. We, we're not trying to plant flags. We're not like, well, yeah. are you a, are you a fuel network? Per-? Look, man, I, if you're part of the national network, that's awesome. Do that. Um, we're all kingdom here. So, but what I want you to take away from this, from this conversation is you need to be in community. And if you have been, if you feel isolated, if you're starting to feel bitter. If you're starting to feel self-righteous, that's a good barometer to go. Uh, do you need some people around you? you? You need some people that that know your context, that get what you do. Um, that guy said that's for you, that's with you, and that that is you um, to be in your corner and just to say hey. And so um, our partnership with Davuli um, and UIWI and um, and we got Will as kind of the face and the, the catalyst for that. Um, we're here to um, to connect with you, and and we have those ten. Uh, those 10 cities around the country. Will, can you like 
what yeah. what kind of city we got. He'll shout that out in a minute. But if you're in one of those cities and you are not connected to that to those networks, you got to get connected. And we want to make sure you get connected to the right people. So uh, hit us up uh, and and let us know what you're up to because there is an army of people that know exactly what you're going through. Mm-hmm. Um, and and come from where you come from and work with the types of kids that you work with um and so hey we're here for you uh will is the man uh, that's that's the catalyst for it and again he's in the network so it's not all will it's not all on will um but we're here to help you guys with that so so shout, shout, maybe shout out some of those cities man if you yeah can, yeah have- let's, let's let's do that um and yeah just a reminder that collaboration is crucial to substantial growth um, we aren't in reinventing the wheel, right? Because it, it's collaboration is not a new deal. We're just um, let's let's address the the elephant in the room. The reality is there's a lot of networks out there, um, but many of us want a network that speaks to our context, that says, "Hey, I get, I I, I know what it's like to have kids who are in the situation that you're dealing with." Right, that this is, I understand your reality and I'm not coming from a place of study, it's a place of living. I, I have kids like that. Yeah. So I'm not gonna tell you something I have not lived. Um, so we're not just reinventing the wheel, we're putting rims and a lift kit on it. Maybe some, you know, some hydros, no, I'm kidding. But, uh, you know, that's what we're doing. So some of the cities uh, that we have out there, shout out to uh, Thomas Brackeen, he's on, he's on the Facebook feed uh, out there in DC. Uh, my guy, uh, Caleb in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we've got New York, we got New Jersey, we got Cleveland, Columbus, uh, LA. Shout out to my guy Bobby out in LA. Kimmy, she's out there in California as well. Um, in Houston, me. But we've got some more awesome guys out here. Markeisha's out. She's actually on the, the Facebook uh, feed today. So shout out to her. Um, I think that's all of them. There's 10 of them. So DC, Illinois, Illinois, I forgot. Uh, Jay, my guy Jay, who's up in Milwaukee. Illinois. Yeah, Mil- Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Milwaukee. Um, uh, Houston, Arizona, New Jersey, New York, Cleveland, and uh, Columbus, man. And this this network is for you, man. Whether you've been in ministry, maybe you're just starting your first two years, you're, you're six months in, you haven't even made a year yet, this is for you. Um, you're five years in, and you, you know, you're killing the game, but man, uh, it, it's just getting kind of kind of dry, right? It happens. Um, you need someone just to help you to you know, revive some things, refresh some things and give you some fresh insight. Dude, this network's for you. Um, you you're just a boss. It's still one for you. Let me tell you something. Everybody has a leader. There's, there's everybody is accountable to somebody. Um, and so to be successful, I, I just want to reiterate that, said you should not be the hero of your own story. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I could take credit for that. I pulled it from a guy named Ben Trueblood, but I love that statement. It was just, I, I'll give you credit the first time, man. I just realized, like, man, this is this is live. I can't be like, so. Uh, <laughs> but the reality is, like, dude, you you got to share. You got to share, dude. And, and when you collaborate, you know, I remember, and, and I'll be quiet at this, but I remember I wanted to do. I was at the Rockets at the Toyota, not Toyota. Yeah, I was at Toyota Center, and I remember, I remember saying, God, one day I want to preach in the Toyota Center, right? Now, dude, I'm not like some mega church preacher, pastor guy. I was just like a youth pastor. And I was like, man, I wanna preach in the Toyota Center where the Rockets play. And you know how it, I actually got to do that? Wow. And you know how I did that? It was through partnership. I called another church and said, hey, you wanna do an event at the Toyota Center? And they were like, yeah, yeah, I'd be down. We called the Rockets and said, hey, can we do a youth event at your at the Rockets? They were like, yeah. They were like, we have a thing where after the game, you can come down, you can shoot free throws. And I said, hey, I've got a crazy request. When we bring our kids, is it okay if I do like a devotional with our kids on the floor of the arena after the game? They were like, <laughs> bro, if you bring the kids, we'll let you do it. Do you know we had a thousand kids show up to that thing? It's awesome, man. And God allowed me to do it, but here's where it got better. The program continued for several years, and each year we would pick another youth pastor from our network to preach on the floor of the arena where the Rockets play. That's that's it. That's yeah. network and collaboration, man. Oh, I love that, man. Friends, I, I hope it inspires you. Like these things are possible. Um, I'm gonna need Will to call up LeBron. 
And <laughs> the last minute three, okay. my Rockets are at home right now. Uh. But, uh, um, but yeah, man, I mean, that's, that's a beautiful story to kind of end with. And friends, we just want to start giving you a vision of what it could not only mean for you personally as a leader, what it could mean for your youth, but what it could mean for your city, your community, and for the community of the leaders. Um, you know, there's a beautiful thing when we all start to get together, there's a beautiful thing where we get inspired. Um, and sometimes that is, it's out of competition. You went, let's be honest. Sometimes you'd be like, oh, a thousand kids, huh? <laughs> I gotta get 2000 kids. There. Okay. You know what I mean? But as long as we're cheering each other on yeah. and, and at the end of the day, we're reaching that 1.2 million young people that are leaving the church every year that we're reaching the millions and millions that haven't heard the gospel, the, the, those that desperately need hope, um, in, in the neighborhoods that are dealing with poverty and violence and all this stuff, man, I like at the end of the day, we need you guys to be healthy because we need you to be ro the role models for this next generation. Um, they desperately need to see what the kingdom of God looks like. And that that's found in your life, that abundant life that, John, that Jesus talks about in John 10. So I, I just want to encourage you, you can't do it alone. You can't do it without community. We've created these networks. There's other networks that we want to expose you to. If you've never heard of Divuli before, go check them out, dvuli.org. And again, check out our partnership with them, Fuel Partner, fuelnetworkpartners.org. It should be in the, the, you know, we'll put it in the in the chat there. Uh, Pastor, can you just, can you pray a blessing on all these leaders um, and, and as God continues to work in and through them, and then we'll end our time together. I, I would love to do that, man. I want to remind you guys, man, don't, don't do ministry alone. Um, don't suffer by yourself uh, to realize that um, we need community. Um, and so as I go to pray, there's something that I've been praying this entire month. And yet it may seem super cheesy, but I'm, I'm so, I think it's, um, it's, it's poignant to where we're at right now. So there was a, there's a boy band, don't judge me. There's a boy band called NSYNC, and uh, and what they would say is they would be like, "It's gonna be me, right?" But they would say, "It's gonna be May," and I looked at the word May, and I was like, "Wow, I like that." And and God led me to a scripture verse, uh, in, in where He talks about may you be blessed, right? And, and I think about that over and over again. I was trying to pull it up because I I can't find it right now because I'm too excited about what we're saying. But that's my prayer for you today: is that you'll be blessed in all that you do that his peace covers you, that he protects you, that he guides you, that he strengthens you and shows you that he's never left you nor forsaken you. So Father, I thank you for the time that we spent together. Uh, God, I thank you that you were here. I pray that the time we spent today was pleasing in your sight. God, we pray for every leader across this nation, anyone who's listening or watching, God, that you speak to them. You said that you are very present help in a time of need. Father, we need you more than ever. God, as we walk out of this pandemic into the next normal, whether that be hybrid ministry, however it looks, God, you already know what it is. God, you know the end from the beginning. You've wrote our story. We apologize for giving other people the pen to the story that you've written for our lives. So God, we thank you and we give the pen back to you and allow you to write the story that you've already set in motion before we were placed in the wombs of our mothers. Mm -hmm. So God, speak to us. Remind us that you've never left us, that you've not forsaken us. God, show us the partnerships, the friendships, that we can collaborate with. God, I pray for the person right now who's on the edge of quitting, who said they're done just as Simon Peter was washing his nets, but reminded that there was another boat next to him, that he was not alone. And that when Jesus stepped on board, he turned his past, not into a prison, but into a platform for his ministry, but also so that he could minister to those who are in his community. God, we thank you for UIWI. We thank you for DV Davuli. We thank you for the national network. We thank you for anyone who is connected, who's been on this call tonight, who just needs a word from you. May they be blessed in this time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Will. I'm so glad we got you on the squad, brother, um, and that you are living a balanced life, even with all the things you're doing, brother. So, guys, friends, uh, man, we love you guys. Um, we, we're with you. We're for you. We are you, like we said. Um, keep on pressing in. Uh, get into that community and we bless you guys and we'll see you on the next one. And we'll see you guys later. Peace.
Okay. I think I think that's all. Uh, 